Good morning, everyone. Yes, there is a microphone. Really, it's just for me. It makes me feel powerful. <laughs> but, uh, and it's fun. It's fun to speak into a microphone. But it's important that we speak into the microphone today, just as a technical note, because it's being picked up. Uh, the, the mic is what allows for the audio on the recording. So please make sure you do speak into the microphone. So welcome all. Uh, my name is Mike McGuire. We have a nice audience here. Um, many of you are familiar with one another, of course, because you are in the same class together. But we do have visitors who have come today, so thank you very much to all of our visitors. And even, even if the audience looks modest in size, the good news is there is an audience beyond this room because as all of my students here know, it is being recorded, right, and will be made available through the library be searchable, will be on the library's YouTube channel. So there is a future audience for these presentations, which I believe is a good thing because uh, these students have uh, plenty of ideas and inspirations for, uh, uh, for future students as well as community members. So again, my name is Mike McGuire. This is, uh, we're here with students from my Composition One course. And Composition One, if you do not know, is a course that is geared towards uh, developing college level writing skills, uh, critical thinking and reading, and an introduction to research. Um, and students this semester in this class have uh, taken this as an opportunity to explore the theme of education. Education, educational systems, and the institutions of education, of course, are things that uh, most of us have been immersed in for uh, pretty much our entire lives. And when we're immersed in something like that, day in and day out, it starts to feel very normal. And there's a danger, I think, with um, that kind of normalcy because we sometimes stop thinking very critically about these things if it's day in and day out all the time. So what we've done here this semester is uh, I've uh, challenged my students to think critically about their education and higher education in particular. Now part of, that, uh, part of that process involves something called deliberative dialogue. Deliberative dialogue is a, is a way of coming together in small groups to look critically at an issue, to ask some uh, hard questions, and to see if we can find a path towards making improvements. Come on in, guys. Um, so the overarching question of our deliberative dialogue this semester has been this. How should higher education help us create the society we want? That's what students were grappling with and, uh, and investigated in more specific, more focused ways as we proceeded. They were asked to articulate very clearly their uh, ideal vision or their vision for our ideal society. What should that society look like and how should higher education play a role? They were also asked to consider the obstacles that they think uh, are in, in the way uh, that are preventing that ideal from being realized. And then finally, they are asked to come up with some very specific action ideas that might uh, be steps towards realizing those ideals and overcoming those obstacles. So expectations, of course, are very high on all the students here. Uh, some might say unreasonable. I mean, how could we expect to solve all of the problems that plague higher education in just 17 weeks? That is unreasonable for sure. But it's also unreasonable to think that this was just a classroom exercise because it's much more than that. One of the um, rules of deliberative dialogue is that we should listen for meaning, not for flaws. Every person has value in the conversation. And while you might uh, hear students up here struggling with some of the complex issues uh, and some of their ideas for action, I challenge you today not to listen for flaws, but for meaning. Uh, listen to these students, listen for what they have to teach us and what they have to learn. And after these presentations, I hope that we can enter into some dialogue about the issues, time permitting, okay? Uh, I do hope that everybody received one of these handouts. It's up front there if you haven't, and I can get it over to you. This is a list of questions that students themselves in this room and, and in my other sections have, uh, have uh, asked. Uh, I prompted them to provide, to ask a question uh, the answer to which would make their path through higher education a little bit easier. And the, this represents the spirit of all their questions. So maybe we'll use some of these for our dialogue afterwards, again, time permitting. But if time does not permit, I have provided in the lower right-hand corner an opportunity for you guys to answer some of these questions for students to provide some tips or advice, which they will see later. 
okay? All right, and then without further ado, let's go to our first group. Gabriella and group, where are you? Come on up. And, and we can clap to support them. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. My name is Isabel. Um, I want to major in nursing. Hi, I'm Gabby, and I'm still undecided with my major, but I'm thinking nursing as of now. All right, for starters, I have a question for all of you. How many of you struggle to pay your tuition? Okay, so quite a few of you. I'm in that same boat myself. You see, with uh, being in the household with my mother being the only breadwinner, she has to pay not only my college tuition, but tuition for my brother who attends private grammar school, plus she has to pay all the bills for the house, the car, the phones, everything. So it's kind of a struggle to make ends meet when it comes down to paying that tuition. I also have uh, struggled with the tuition fee. Uh, thankfully, yes, I have financial aid, but then I feel like without the financial aid, it's it was gonna be difficult for me to go to college because even if we try and work, you have to pay the bills and you still have to live, you have to eat, you have to, you know, you have to take care of all the bills and everything and all that money is not enough for you to like attend the college and be able to achieve your dreams. So I think uh, this uh, dialogue is really beneficial for us because it's gonna help us to solve or try and uh, find a ways to come up with solutions to help us with our tuition fee, thank you. Our hope and our view for higher education is that it will be a more affordable, more accessible sort of, right now it's sort of a privilege for many, but we want it to be, we want everyone to have a fair chance at this higher education so that hopefully we will have, we will build a society of a more educated people as yes, there are quite a few dropouts like Mark Zuckerberg who became a billionaire by making Facebook, but not everyone in this room is gonna be the next Mark Zuckerberg. So education is a keystone to a successful future, and we want that to be a more affordable and accessible milestone in life for everyone. But there are a few obstacles, of course. Yes, uh, to come up with that, we just have realized we have obstacles that are making us not be able to achieve our college. As we have said, our tuition is one of the things. Um, the tuition fee is always higher, and it's getting higher every time. And it's associated with other costs, like you will be able to get financial aid fine and pay for the tuition, but still you have to buy the textbook, you have to buy, like if you're majoring in nursing or in medical school, you have to buy some things that you need for your practicals and stuff like that, which are not cheap. So um, we still feel like the tuitions are getting higher and that is an obstacle for us to be able to uh, get educated. Again, we, we have an option of getting the loans, but the lonely payment system, they are not favorable to us. Most of the people end up paying uh, the loan debts for the, their whole life. And it's like, it doesn't help anything because you feel like you just went to school, spent all this money and you have to come and pay back all your life. So I feel like that's an obstacle for us and it's making most people like drop out of school for that. And we do have, right now, I'm going to list two solutions that we have so far to help with this issue. For starters, there's a simple one. Yes, it is kind of a pain to apply for financial aid because it's a long process. And yes, student loans can often end up having to be paid later on in the future. But there is still the opportunity of scholarships, which a lot of students have not exactly taken advantage of. So that's definitely one step that us as students can take. We can push forward to get those scholarships because some people really need them, yet for some reason we sit there complaining about how high the tuition is, but we don't do anything about it. The f when it comes to action, you have to be the one to take the first step. You cannot wait for somebody else to make a move for you. Along with that, our state is also trying to take a few steps in helping with the situation. For example, there is the College Affordability Act, which is, pl which is aimed at helping high school graduates who cannot afford college to help with their tuition and such. And what we could do is we could visit the uh, Illinois Board of Higher Education website and we could all sign this bill. Hopefully with enough people to sign it, it'll be pushed forward as something that is as a reality for our state. And hopefully with, with throughout the years, 
the tuition issue will oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. the tuition issue will be improved. And uh, some final questions we want to leave you with are, how willing are you to take action? Are you willing to just are you actually willing to take a step forward? Or are you just going to con or are many people just going to continue to sit there and wait for somebody else to, to make the first move? Thank you. Defer questions till the end, but come on up to our next group then, please. Danny and Kara. Oh, Danny's not here. <laughs> so, so Carl, <laughs> come on up, guys. We got a light, a light group here. Some of your, some of your groupmates didn't make it today, but that's okay. You can, you can carry it. I'm sure you can. I, and I elected Danny as your, as your uh, captain, and he, <laughs> and he didn't come. So good morning, everyone. Yeah, my name is um, Anthony, and I'm majoring in nursing. And my name is Carl, and I'm majoring in business. Yeah, so um, with the present situation going on um, in our society today, we um, decided to talk about motivation and how to um, encourage yourself to uh, do stuff and push yourself to success. So here, um, me and my colleague, well, the others are not here, unfortunately. But me and my colleague, we, we kind of like talked about how motivation can can um, be a big can play a big role in our life. Okay, um, we we're talking about the cost of education and how expensive it is, and how many of us cannot afford to. Um, apply for school or probably pay our school fees or whatever. Yeah, I'm Nigerian. As a Nigerian, you have to have money to kind of like go to school. If you don't have this, you're never going to go to school. You're just going to be broke and just, you know, be way down. So if you have all this in America, the financial aid and the, um, the financial aid and the scholarships, I feel like if you can motivate yourself, to apply for this, encourage yourself to go apply for the financial aid and the um, scholarship. You should be able, you should be able to kind of like uh, have this opportunity on your own ends because it is very important. And then um, touching on that with like being motivated, some people that can't afford to go to college obviously have to like work like part time or full time to afford their college education. So like doing that alone also serves as a motivation. Because, like, it's your own money and you want the education. So you're motivating yourself in a way and paying for it yourself. Yeah, yeah so um, we actually have to say something about um, this motivation because it is, it is one of the key, key, um, key road to success. This is very important in the sense that a lot of students feel like they can be weighed down when it comes to studying and kind of like um, – creative schedule for themselves. Yeah, it is very difficult. I am actually in that situation like almost every day you feel like, oh, I have to work and I have to um, meet up with um, family needs and stuff like that. And at the same time, come to school. Yeah, it is, it is very, very difficult, but we have to like create a, a perfect, like not even, not even if it's not a perfect um, schedule or whatever, you can just do something or um, put yourself in a situation where you feel like, okay, well, I think I can do this and Go out there and do it. You know, just do it anyways because you feel like, yeah, you can do it. It's not, for, it's not for the community or for anybody. It's for yourself and for your family because that is very, very important. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, like, you have to obviously want to do it because, like, you're the only thing kind of holding yourself back. Like, you have to have, again, the motivation to do it because if you're not motivated in life, then you're obviously not going to get anywhere. And, like, college is a challenging thing, so you have to be motivated in order to, like, be successful, not just for yourself, but, like, for your family and everything. Make them proud. Yeah. Well, I believe individually we have one or two ways to encourage yourself and motivate ourselves to um, reach our, our future goals. So the question we're going to throw out there is how do we encourage ourselves? In your personal opinion, like, how do you feel like you can encourage yourself?
Okay, hi everyone, I'm Lily. I'm looking to pursue radiology. Hi, my name is Josh Mendoza and I'm pursuing a career in nursing. Uh, my name is Julia Galassini and my major is restaurant management. I'm Maggie Ma Leia and my major is somewhere in the art field. I'm Andrew Oshido and I want to major in nursing. Okay, so tuition is rising and financial aid is falling, so what can we as a community do about it? Uh, through hours of personal reflection and being together with our groups, we've come up with a few hopes that we have for Moraine as a school, and then here they are. We hope to lower tuition costs and make higher education more affordable for all that want it, but although we do want to make education more affordable, we still face obstacles each and every day, even right here at Moraine Valley. There are some obstacles that can tie into the topic of higher education. There are um, expenses of the college itself, the competition, and also the greediness. According to the article, what's the price tag from the college data website, the average cost was about 33000 for uh, private schools, $9,000 for public schools, and $24,000 for out-of-state students. Um, looking at these prices, we found out that some families could not afford uh, afford these price tags and uh, competition between colleges is also an issue in higher edu education it doesn't matter really because education is still an education you can still learn something no matter the quality of the college you don't need to be the most prestigious uh, university out there and lastly greediness students that go to a top-ranked university uh, they can experience uh, this a lot. One student can be really selfish because they mostly po uh, focus on their pro personal goals rather than the community. Those students who want to work together with that selfish student, uh, they, can real, they can feel really intimidated and can affect their ability to learn. And now to introduce the call to action for these obstacles. Okay, so the first way that we chose to approach this, we were kind of sitting there and thinking, what is the kind of way that we can lower the tuition, but yet still have some student-to-student -student action with lowering the cost? So we chose fundraising. Fundraising in a type of way where we thought that Moraine should offer a day on campus where a few local restaurants will run out of spot and then we will be buying the food, like whatever's on their menu, and then 10% of those profits will go towards Moraine, and the cost that it'll take like for the restaurant to rent the spot, that'll also go to Moraine, so we can use that money to lower the tuition costs, and then we, in a way, get kind of rewarded for that because we get the food, we get to eat it, and yet it helps out those people who maybe can't afford the tuition as well as somebody who is buying the food can. And uh, we also thought that maybe having a discount on um, going, getting your classes registered early. Um, it shows the responsibility, responsibility. and um, yeah. Uh, another idea for action and a way to overcome these uh, obstacles is to have uh, scholarship fairs here at Marine Valley. Uh, currently, we have job fairs here, and uh, we feel like it would be it would bring more awareness and uh, better advertise and promote scholarships uh, if we have scholarship fairs here. And uh, according to Marine's website, the Marine Valley Community College Foundation uh, has more than 60 scholarships ranging from uh, $250 to $2,500. But most students don't even know about scholarships. Now, if I ask all the students here, if uh, have they looked at the scholarships or even applied, uh, can I see a raise of hands of how many of you? See about like five of you out of all of us? Needs to, we need to have more people applying to scholarships and uh, we believe that having these scholarship fairs will uh, help students gain more knowledge on scholarships that apply for them. And then the last solution has to do with, again, scholarships, but also College 101. Um, at Moraine, College 101 is a required class that you have to take, so we feel as part of the class, um, you need to be required to either write an essay and or apply for a scholarship, that way that there, there's more people 
out there um, looking for them. There's more people knowing, hey, this is something I can apply to, this is something I can do, this is doable. And I know just from being a student and having to deal with time management, work, getting stuff done, hobbies, social life, that when something isn't required for a class, I tend not to do it. That's just the honest truth. If I don't have to do something, time management, I'm not going to do it. So if something is required for your college one-on-one -on -one class and it's part of the grade, and s since you already have to write a lot of essays for that class, we feel that if one of those essays or one of the parts of the class is um, to apply for a scholarship, that more people will be looking at it and therefore more people will be taking advantage of those things. Um, and then some of the questions that we have is how many people here would actually um, go to a scholarship fair if Moraine had one? So we think that the turnout would be pretty good. It would be a pretty good idea for, some, for Marine to do based on everyone here. Um, then there's one last question. Uh, to the administrators here, uh, after explaining the ideas for action, which would be the most effective and how soon would the idea be executed if it were to be approved? I don't know if it, the yeah. But that's it. Thank you. All right. We've got our next troop on the move. Come on, on up. Hi, I'm Nick Shahelski, and uh, I'm majoring in electrical engineering. Hi, I'm Luke. I'm majoring in marketing. Hi, my name is Luke, and I'm majoring in business. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm majoring in fire science. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm majoring in English education. So I'm going to start us off with a good question. Who here wants to pay $100,000, if not more, for school? Raise your hands. Exactly. Um, <laughs> there are problems that can be fixed with enough motivation and action th throughout all the problems that we have with paying for school, people that have to go to work full time, work hard, and go to school at the same time. Um, so at the end of this, um, we want to be able to have everyone be able to have the same opportunity to get at, at an education. Um, I think a lot of students around here know um, we're already stressed enough in college, and we don't want to be stressed anymore with these over-the-top tuition rates that some people in here have don't know or have um, trouble paying for. So funding and is one of the biggest reasons tuition is where it's at, especially for community colleges. Lots of the taxpayers that we get go into helping the tuition out. So that's one of the biggest obstacles I think we face is being able to just simply raise a tax to raise a funding for a college. That doesn't even sound right. Many people that don't have kids in college, they're not going to be okay with that. Um, another reason is scholarships themselves. We've heard a lot about them already, but th an obstacle that I think is bigger than just having scholarships is doing them. As uh, we've discussed, you have to actually apply to a scholarship to get a scholarship. And I think that we need to kind of wake up more as to that fact. Um, and finally, the school needs. But interesting fact. So David Harriman, um, a writer for schoolmoney.org, said that 27% of our tuition, actually, on average, goes to you know funding for teacher salary and stuff, while 39% goes into the school needs. So if I'm, you know, I'm not the best at math, but that leaves 30 34% going where? Um, and maybe we put that 34% to something, because honestly, I have no idea where it goes, but if we put into maybe, you know, tuition, uh, it might go down. <laughs> um, certain things that students could do to get involved is start raising awareness. Um, they could form uh, committees or uh, a following of some sort to make a bigger impact. Um, 
after forming those committees and everything, uh, you could start signing petitions, sending mass emails to the Dean of Academics, and uh, getting uh, professors involved too. Um, you could have the student government get more involved uh, in the state budgets and school board spending. Um, they could become more knowledgeable on um, like what's going on and everything and then find ways that the budget is or isn't working. Um, they could also brainstorm ways to fix it as well. Um, by taking action and getting involved, students can start creating change uh, to these stagnant issues in higher education. Um, so just a couple questions for you guys to think about. Um, so are you guys willing to spend your time and resources um, in order to further higher education? And then are you guys doing anything right now? Um, and then what steps are you taking with other students right now to form um, a committee or collaborate um, ideas on bettering higher ed education as well? Um, and then just to kind of recap everything that we talked about, we um, looked at some problems that can be fixed with enough motivation and action. So motivation and action are key, um, as, some, as some other groups have talked about as well. Um, and then no one wants to pay like $100,000 for school. Um, so that's some things that we're trying to fix as well. Um, our hope is just to not be stressed out by the expensive um, cost of college, uh, because as we talked about, um, there's enough stress as, as it is um, and stuff like that. So. Um, and then issues are funding, um, access to loans, and things like that. But if we just all work together with students and faculty alike, uh, we, we really think that we can um, come up with some, with, some, with some good ideas and fix um, some of the problems that we face. So thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm David Narchik, and I'm an engineering major. Uh, my name is Michael, and I'm uncertain as to what I should do. Hi, I'm Kayla, and I'm majoring in nursing. I'm Alex, and I'm undecided. Uh, okay, so uh, today we'll be discussing the topic of low graduation rates, and uh, this is something that probably a lot of you are like familiar with. Uh, you know, either because of uh, Marine Valley's programs or initiatives trying to raise this, or just maybe you have like family relatives um, that have like dropped out, and you know, that could be like a tough thing to um, maybe deal with now with uh, in today's economy. You know, like I've personally had many relatives drop out of college, and like the reasons why vary. So like, I don't know, either because of like uh, they felt they wanted to get to the workforce earlier, or uh, just because they felt like college wasn't the right thing for them, but you know, for them at least, uh, most of them, you know, ended up going back to college. And, uh, you know, we should, um, and while, like, that's a great thing that, like, they could go back to college because, you know, studies show that, like, workers who find themselves without any sort of higher, uh, higher education, you know, they tend to, on average, earn less money and have less job prospects. So, um, you know, we should try to keep students that might maybe go down that same path uh, maybe just keep them, you know, you know, motivated in pursuing their education further, you know, while they're still here. And of course, uh, our hope for uh, college is that uh, it maintains, you know, a strong standard of economic mobility and a standard of uh, student success. And the reason why we choose those words, especially economic mobility, is because uh, you know, we believe that college is sort of like. Uh, it's become this sort of uh, facet of oppor opportunity. So, like, if you want to, you know, improve your uh, your standard of living and you want to make more money, like later on in your life, you know, obviously you come to college to do that. And you know, parents want their kids to make more money than them, and you know, they want their kids later on uh, to do the same thing. And so, obviously, uh, college seems to be the right decision for this. Uh, Moraine Valley has the second largest student body in Illinois for a community college at 32,000 students. Um, all the students here have access to uh, free resources such as the Fitness and Recreational Center, 
opened up to $128,000 in student scholarships. Um, there's an active campaign called Agree to Degree in the school that encourages more students and basically to raise awareness for uh, graduating on time. Among the statistics in the campaign is a 42% increase in expected income with an associate's degree and a 38% in expected income with some sort of certificate. The issue of low graduation rates, particularly relating to the two-year community college, much like Moraine Valley, is extremely prevalent. According to the article, Community College Students Sources, the role of motivation and self-empowerment, collaboratively written by Kimberly Martin, Richard Galantino, and Laurie Townsend states, at the national level, 46% of the community college students will not graduate from any within six years, and another 20% still be enrolled without yet having it, uh, earned a, a degree. We put forth a potential solution to resolve the low graduation rates. The proposal of a free college education for all students, um, considering the fact that expenses are a main concern, and we feel like many individuals would stand behind this um, idea as a whole, but overall we know that this plan probably wouldn't be successful in our current economic state. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, in order to positively affect community college graduation rates, uh, we believe it would be extremely beneficial for these institutions to uh, promote the civic duties and societal responsibilities uh, which we all hold as citizens. Uh, this is reinforced by the survey study done by um, Kerry Kisker, Danny Weintraub, and uh, Mallory Newell, which finds that um, the school itself is critical to uh, civic learning, obviously in school, but as well as what civic duty is observed um, outside of school. Uh, in addition, we also believe that it is vital to ensure that um, students remain on track uh, towards earning either a degree or certificate. Uh, similarly, the journal, the journal article titled uh, what kinds of advising are important to community college pre- and post-transfer students, written by Janine Allen, and Ka uh, Janine Allen, Kathleen Smith, and Jeanette Mulek, once again, through survey-based research, uh, found that pre-transfer pre students, uh, as opposed to post-transfer students, uh, significantly requested greater advisement in, um, assisting, uh, which in assisting in choosing among the general education classes and advise, advisement which assists students with deciding what kind of degree to pursue. So therefore, more specifically, uh, we recommend firstly, the endorsement of the implementation of service learning courses for credits. Uh, through this academic method, where civic engagement is sought and, um, and students learn through organized involvement in something greater, uh, it can result in the academic understanding of civic learning uh, itself, civic responsibility, and relevant societal issues, and a broader appreciation of the world we live in and an enhanced sense of one's role. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we uh, recommend more strict, if not mandatory, academic advisement meetings for all students, uh, which could be taken, uh, which we could be taken on by the advisors themselves, uh, full-time professors, and experienced second or third year students uh, in order to tend to the needs and questions of all uh, students who attend community college. To conclude, higher education incurs criticism but also plays a major role in our society. Um, like we said before, here at Marine, agree to degree um, encourages success. Staying, staying here until you leave with a degree. Um, bettering the graduation rates can enable improvement in our nation's economy by promoting one's civic duties as well as staying on task. We also believe that the implementation implementation of service learning courses and strict advisement supervision can work toward improving this issue as a whole. Hi, my name is Destiny, and I'm, this is my first year at Moraine. 
I'm Brianna, and I'm majoring in business. I'm Zara, and this is also my first year, and I'm majoring in uh, criminal justice. My name is Percy, and I'm uh, majoring in computer science. My name is Jesus. I'm currently undecided, but am I moving to criminal justice? Um, well, I know that this is my first year at Moraine, and also my first year in college in general, but um, I also realized since starting, I have no money. Like, I have nothing. Even though I have a job, and even though I, I don't know, I, I pay for other things like, I don't know, like insurance for my car or to fix my car. And then there's, I, I don't know, just student loans. I also think about that. Like, if I have to transfer to another school, I'm going to be drowning in debt. And that really sucks. And then with all that anxiety and stuff, I just try to get my mind off it and I look at memes, right? Like everybody else, I just want to, I don't know, let go with memes. So I, I once came across this meme and it, t it said that the average cost of a funeral is $7,000 to $10,000. And I'm like, wait, wait. So you're telling me that dying is easier than going to college. That all of my student debts are one, gonna still follow me to my grave and be passed down to my children, and that it's also cheaper. My, my, my casket is gonna be cheaper than, student, that, than the school fees. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And it really troubles me that there are things like this that are happening and that are still going on. So. Uh, Brianna, do you think that you can give me a little bit of something to hope for? Um, as we work towards our higher education, we all hope to gain more knowledge about the outside world. Um, we also hope to one day be able to provide security for our family. Um, I know we also hope to be able to be a voice for many college students to help with issues in our education system, issues dealing with financial stability, financial aid, and ri rising tuition costs. Like Brianna, I share the same hopes and dreams as do many other college students. <clears throat> I, want, I want future generations to not have to worry about paying for college or the debt that accrues from it. We as a society need to make it our mission to help lower tuition um, for future generations. A, sh a student should have to pick the college of their choice based on tuition. Like I, um, I was planning on going to U of I, but I might say uh, home and go to UIC instead because of financial costs, and I think that um, we should make it as we should make it our mission to ensure that future generations don't have to make the, make the same choice. Um, <clears throat> college is supposed to open the doors of opportunity and enhance the way of living, not diminish it with the cost it brings. <clears throat> Bernie Sanders wanted to make college free, and everyone thought he was crazy. But although we can't make it completely free. We can take steps towards making it more affordable. Like everyone, like everything in life, these steps come with obstacles, which uh, Percy is going to lead us through. So once high school is over, many of us already want to have a chance of pursuing a higher education. But many of us now know that it's not going to be easy and there's going to be many obstacles in the way. For, for one, uh, tu tuition costs is the most common and the most popular one because many of us deal or have dealt with tuition costs. Now, how many of you like, are currently working a full-time or part-time job? And how many of you are paying bills, whether it's phone bill, car insurance, and more? All right, for some of us, we're struggling with that, and we're trying to make the money to pay our next payment for our bills or car. But some of us also have to make our next payment for our tuition costs. Now, here are some ways that we can help lower the cost within ourselves and everybody else. So one specific action we came up with in order to combat this problem of tuition and this massive debt that it causes would be getting together with students, approaching school officials such as Dr. Sylvia Jenkins, the president here at Moraine Valley, and proposing ways to get free tuition for the less fortunate students, students who have other financial responsibilities. And also, apart from this, we can ask for the increase promotion and awareness of Marine Valley scholarships as was mentioned earlier by previous groups. It really is something that's overlooked often and not really taken advantage of. 
Another obstacle that some of us may, like it may apply to or you may know someone is immigration reform. Uh, according to scholarships.com, roughly 11.2 million undocumented immigrants live in the United States uh, with 2.1 million immigrants potentially eligible for the most recently proposed DREAM Act, which might be ending because of uh, President Trump's claims. But uh, currently only 7,000 to 13,000 undocumented students are currently enrolled in college. Now, for me personally, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, affect me personally, but I do know people who have been rejected of scholarships because of this. Now, here are some ways that we can help to not only help others, but ourselves as well if it applies to us. So a way in which we could confront this second obstacle would be to appeal to our representatives, such as our Governor Bruce Rauner. Him, with uh, his influence in the political community, could advocate for it throughout his campaign and help protect the DREAMers Act, which then in turn would give deserving undocumented students the ability to go to school and apart from that, become citizens through the entire process. Um, this of course would be done through emails and written letters. Now some of us right now, <clears throat> or most of us should know that Illinois isn't doing good, too good in the economy right now. but. My, some of you might not know that our state legislators have proposed bills as of now to help lower the cost, but aren't getting through because no one really knows like what's going on with them. Um, our state legislators do have the power to like make our chances of pursuing a higher education lower a little bit, but I mean it's going to be hard because not many people are aware of what they're doing right now. Um, there are many ways to find out like what bills are being proposed as of now that you can search up by just searching up our state legislators. But there are also many other options that you can do to like contact them and help yourself and others with uh, tuition. So according to the website Market Watch from an article titled Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren Joined Forces to Make College Free, they are currently working on attempting to propose to pass a bill that would give over $41 billion in federal funding to colleges in order to try and wipe out massive student loan debts and apart from that lower interest rates on students currently taking on loans. So uh, a way to try to make this a reality would be to vote for and support the campaigns of the legislators and politicians who are advocating for these changes. Um, so another step to further promote the efficiency in this would be to do research on the candidates beforehand in order to make sure you're finding the right person who can get the job done and, in a sense, help to eliminate student debt. And we also do have a couple questions for you as of now. My first question is, even though some of these obstacles may not or do apply to you, are you willing to do the research and help others how they're struggling, maybe even more than you are? And then I also have a question too. Um, uh, do you think that politicians should have this much power over the future of our nation? Thank See you guys, thank you. Just to make sure all groups have gone, yes? Okay, I don't want to miss anybody. All right. Excellent, thank you for, uh, for coming on up and, and uh, presenting us with your ideas and your thoughts and so forth and, and asking some questions. We heard a lot from our student groups today, uh, raised many issues, provided some uh, ideas to move forward on, but also asked some direct questions. So at this point, I'd like to open it up for anybody who'd like to make comments, provide answers, ask questions, whatever the case might be. Uh, let's maybe try to cultivate a little dialogue here and if you're at a loss, uh, there is this handout with many questions that were provided by these students themselves. So anyone at all? I have a microphone. I see, I see a hand. I yeah, I mean, if, if there, I want the students to go first if any of, anyone wants to provide feedback to their peers. No? So I can go ahead. First of all, I am so impressed with every single one of you, your topics and your groups. There's themes, right? And the main theme is the cost of college and tuition. 
Um, the other theme is there's so many nursing students in the house. <laughs> so that was pretty neat to hear what you all are majoring in. And if you're undecided, I just want to put a pitch in for the counseling. By the way, my name is Suzanne Nasser. I work in the Counseling and Career Development Center here on campus. We're located in the S building, second floor. We provide personal counseling for students who are struggling um, with any kind of personal issues, right? Whether it be anxiety, uh, depression, um, you know, problems at home with the parental units, uh, challenges in a significant relationship. We offer career counseling. I heard that some folks are undecided, so please come and see us for career counseling as well. And we offer educational counseling, not to be confused with the Academic Advising Center who um, helps you pick out your classes. We help you with time management, procrastination, motivation, that group back there talked about motivation. Um, so please come and see us. Um, there's so much to say. You know, I was taking notes, um, you know, and my colleague from the counseling department was here too, and I think we're just so impressed, right? Um, I wish there were more administrators here. Um, so one of the things that I would suggest for future classes and for future students is to personally send an invitation to our college president to attend. I used to advise a club on campus, and when we wanted them to come to our events, the students would hand write a note to the college president. They would hand write notes to the vice presidents on campus and invite them to their events. It would be great if they were sitting here listening to all the wonderful remarks you had to make in the research that you did. So that's one thing. Um, I, I just, there's just so much, you know, to tackle. Um, the, the, one other suggestion, I think, or a couple other suggestions I would have, I would say, is get involved with the student government here on campus. Find out who your student trustee is. That student trustee has a seat at the board meeting. She has the ear, her name is Hannah Asfour. She has the ear of um, our college president, the vice presidents, the board members. Find out who your student trustee is here. Find out who the club advisor is for student government. Attend these meetings. Form your own committee. You all had some great suggestions questions already, right? Form your own committee that's going to specifically tackle uh, tuition. And then with your committee, you take your suggestions, you take your ideas, and you propel them forward through student government, through our student trustee. Even try to attend board meetings. Listen to what they're saying, right? Um, and then, I mean, there's just so much more, but I don't know if you want to add some things to, um, and then Okay, um, I'm Pamela Payne, I'm the director of the Job Resource Center. And one of the interesting things is and when you guys start talking about the cost of tuition, not one of you said that the resource here, um, that there was a resource on campus to help you connect with jobs and internships. That's interesting to me. She's smiling. That's what we're here for and it's a free it's a, it's a free service. There's no place that you're gonna be able to get help with your resumes and cover letters and, and we have jobs. Somebody did mention job fairs. We're the ones that put those on. We have, we have waiting lists for employers who are looking for you guys. Like we had 80 employers um, this past job fair. We have them one in the spring, one in the fall. We have on-campus recruiting. Do you guys see? Um, employers around campus? No? You're not looking around? Okay. So we have people coming on campus. We had Best Buy in Orland looking for some of you guys. They were looking for people. They hired 50 students in one week. They're walking around. We put them in high volume places. So the question I have back to you guys is this. Um, I agree with my colleague. You guys are amazing. These are wonderful questions. But I really want to tap into the, the part about where, you know, when you start talking about motivation, I saw one of the questions were, what do we do about laziness and things like that? We try to do all we can to do, you know, to help and get the word out. But I just want to know, how are we going to do that if you don't take advantage of the scholarships, coming to the Job Resource Center, you know, 
their on-campus jobs, even if you're an uh, um, international student, you know, there are on-campus jobs that, you know, you can be hired for. How can we tap into you to have, you're asking for these services about tuition and all these kind of things, but how can we get access to you so that we can help you help yourself? So that's the question I want to know. Um, I think like something that I think gets my attention is for this class we have like the COM 101 remind like the text thing and I think like when you email stuff to people's emails like me as a student personally I don't check my my student email unless like I'm looking if a class is canceled or something but if something shows up in my text messages it doesn't matter I'm gonna look at it even if it's like school related just because it's a text like I feel like there should be something that the, like you can sign up through the school that where it's just like they text your phone that information instead of emailing it to you. Because personally, I don't check my email. I know the teachers do. I know you're supposed to email teachers. But personally, I don't check my email that much unless like I'm waiting for something in my email. If I get a text, I'm going to check it right away. Like That's just something that I think to get students like nowadays um, attention is send a text. Because for me, if I, if I hear the text notification, I'm not going to know right away, oh, this is like, the school, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna look at it and that's just gonna get your attention right off the bat and then you're probably gonna read it just cause you already looked at it. So that's like, for me it's like, I don't know half the time when stuff is going on around the school because when I walk down the hallways, I'm not necessarily looking at the posters on the wall, I'm looking to get to my class, I'm looking to get where I'm going um, and I kinda like block out everything else cause when you have a goal, you kinda don't let obstacles distract you. So. Like, I think the one way to get someone's attention is through their phone because everyone is on their phone. If you see people walking down the hallway, they're on their phone. People trip over garbage cans because they're on their phone. So to get students' attention and to raise awareness about simple things like, hey, there's a job fair coming up this date, put in your calendar through a text remind from Moraine. Just like, because I feel like that's something that I'd be like, oh, okay, and I'll put it in my calendar just because it's on my phone through my text, not through my email. So if I get something through my email notification, then like, eh, whatever, and I don't really look at it. I don't click on it. I don't look at it. I'm like, eh, it's my email. Yeah, I mean, we live in an age where it's sound bites and I don't know how many characters, right? We are not reading long, extensive emails. And I think, I think that's a great idea because the college will email, um, send us text messages if the college is closed because of snow, right? Uh, I, you, somebody mentioned College 101. I think that's a great idea to have students start researching scholarships and writing essays as an assignment for college, even if you're not eligible, because um, you have to have at least, I think, for many of our scholarships have successfully completed 12 credit hours, but to at least get students in to the habit of looking at where the scholarships are, writing the essays. But like when College 101 is canceled, you can get a ta you'll get a text that it's canceled. So there's definitely that capability to send students text messages when there are events going on on campus. And maybe we can do it where students can opt in to get these text messages or they can opt out, you know. Um, and then making sure we're not inundating students because there are so many events on campus yep. all the time. So um, how do we pick and choose when our students gonna get text messages? Is it about the job fair? Is it about the one book, one college, sexual assault and domestic violence programming that's going on, but that's something we can talk about, and I think you're right. Or even Twitter, if you all have Twitter accounts, right, then you get that, you know, 70 limit character where you can tweet about an event on campus. So I think you're saying using social media, using our phones to get the messages, and I think that's a great suggestion, too. Um, just a couple other things I wanted to point out. I want to point out that, I'll, I'll hand it to them. We do have a scholarship for undocumented students. Somebody brought up undocumented students. Um, some of our scholarships, we get emails, um, beg your students to apply for these scholarships. We're not getting enough student applications. So when Pamela says, you know, how do we encourage all of you and motivate all of you? We have the resources. How can you all, t how do we get you to take advantage of them? I think that's the question back at all of you. We do have scholarships for undocumented students. We also have scholarships that students aren't applying for. So we need to continue these conversations on how to get you motivated to use these resources. There was a question coming over here. Okay, right, uh, I'm trying to um, back up with um, what she said earlier about um, text messages and um, emails and stuff. Yeah, she's actually telling the truth. And I feel like uh, it would be a good idea if um, teachers come to class and kind of like, you know, 
if maybe if some teachers have um, information about what is going on in school, they can actually bring it to class. Because I remember my last my last semester, um, my com one co my communication teacher, she used to come to class and tell us, "Hey, this is what is going on." I actually attended two events in the school because she told us, "Like, hey, it we will kind of like benefit out of it." Yeah, so it is very important if teachers kind of like bring it to us and let us know about it too. And the test message, yeah, definitely always I'm on my phone trying to like test people. So if the a notification comes on and like, oh yeah, I think this is for school, so let me check it out. So but my email, I'll tell you, I kind of like came to school and class was canceled because I don't really check my email like that. And I was in school, that was a psychology one and I'm like, oh wow, <laughs> so yeah. Mike, can I? Okay. So, what's your name? Julia. Okay, I love what you said about, um, let me see. You said, when you have a goal, you don't let anything, any obstacle get in your way or distract you. Is that what you said? Okay. So, how many of you all have the goal to complete, to complete college? Okay. So, you have the goal to complete college, right? And so in order to complete college, you got to, somebody got to pay for it some kind of way, right? Okay. And there are things that you need to do to understand how to complete college, like assignments. So, you, you know, on Canvas, you have to figure out what your assignments are and things like that. So when you have a goal, you don't let anything get in your way. So why is it that I got to figure out you don't want to do the email, so when I start texting you, you ain't going to check those either. So that's my point, you guys. I mean, you guys got some awesome ideas. Like, I, I wrote a lot of them. I was over here writing like I was a scribe. Um, you know, just wonderful ideas. But the deal is this. In the final analysis, at the end of the day, what, is, what are you going to do to make sure that you get this education that you obviously find valuable? Because all, all you guys talked about was how much it costs. And if you get it, if you, if you are not appreciative of it when you got to pay something for it, how much are you guys appreciative of things you get for free? Let's just think about that. If you get it for free, how much are you going to value that if you don't value when you got to pay for it? So I, I agree. I agree that you guys got some awesome ideas, and, and a lot of these I'm going to implement in my own self. It was nice because all three of us teach. I teach College 101, too. And so... I do have them actually apply for jobs, and several of my students say, oh, I applied for that job and I got it, you know? So I like the idea of doing that, I'm gonna incorporate, we do have people coming to our classes and stuff, and you know, so we, we will you know, incorporate those things, but what I wanna know is what are you gonna do about your life? I'll help you, I'm here, I'm here, I'm your champion, we're your champion, we're here. What are you gonna do about your life? Um. Thank you. Okay, um, so we appreciate that you we have all these resources, like the job resources, the advising, the counseling. But most of the time, like she said, uh, when I come to college or when I make up my mind, like I want to go to college and this is um, like I'm going for nursing. So I sign up for my classes and I check, like, okay, I can pay this amount or I, I just limit my classes uh, depending on what I can afford. And then that is what I will just concentrate on. Like, seriously, when I come to school, I know, like, I have a class at 12. That's the time I'll get to school because I have other responsibilities. Like, I have to go to work or I have, like, family issues. So um, it, maybe it's not something that uh, it's not something that we are used to, but it's, like, it doesn't happen to us. Like, when you, I just come to school unnecessarily, like, I want to come and check out the post or, like, just check up on the email or do something. So, like, we don't want to do it, but because of the time management, like, I, I know that when I go to school, I have to, like, check up when, where is my class or if I'm going to the library to borrow a book or if I'm going to the bookstore to buy a book or if I'm just going to, like, you know, see the advising, the academic advising to see what classes I can pick. That's the only thing I know. But if you ask me about any other thing that's going around the, the college, we don't know. Most of us, we don't know what's going on. If we want to be, like, social in the way that you're saying, like, we should know, uh, I mean, we should get information about the job resources or about the just other counseling activities. It's like I have no time to do that. It's not like I don't want to do it, but I actually don't have time, and I don't even know where to access it. 
seriously, I know maybe there was a job resource when I was doing my uh, CNA program, but then I never, I, that's when I saw it, the ads in the, uh, the B building. That was the only time that I saw, but I've never seen any ads in like science building. So whenever I walk to the science building, I just know I have to go to my library, um, my lab, or I'm going to the lecture class and you know just follow up. But we, we are not aware of what is going on. That's why we don't take advantage of the things that you're saying that are being provided for free. If we, uh, we, if we are only aware of them, it's easier for us to take advantage. That's why she's suggesting about the, um, the text messages because it's easier to like check on my phone like, oh, there's this and I really need, uh, uh, I'm short of my, my tuition, so I really need to go and find a job. Or maybe I really need to see a counseling advisor to tell me like what am I supposed to do because I'm stuck here with my like credit or my classes. You know, so the main thing that we are, uh, that is the issue I think for most of us is that we are not aware of the things that are being provided. We appreciate that you provide the services and we would like to get them, but we are not aware of them because when we come to school, the only thing we are, our mind is on is like going to class, attending my class, doing my assignment, going to the library. Those are the only things that we, th <laughs> we think about, so. Yes. Oh, I thought she was trying to respond to that. No, yes, go ahead. go ahead and respond. I will, I will wait. Yeah. I just want to say one thing. You got to meet us halfway. You got to meet us halfway, you know. Um, and so I understand we're a commuter college, and students come here, they take their classes, they go to work, they go take care of their families, but you got to meet us halfway. And um, I guess my response to that, you are aware now. Okay? So I'm looking at all your faces. <laughs> And I want to see you in S202, the job resource center, and you know where you go and register and pay your tuition, all that kind of place? Upstairs. So you're all aware. <laughs> yeah, um, so I was trying to refer to um, the question you asked about um, what are we doing to, um, to take all this opportunity we have in ground? Like, what are we doing to achieve it? Okay, so this is what I this is what I think. Definitely, every one of us took college um, call one o one class, and they actually gave us a lot of information about um, schools and the opportunity that is going on. And like you said, we all aware of it. Definitely, we all aware of it. But it's just up to us. Is why I really do, I really do not want to talk about the cost of the cost of education because in my country, like I said, I'm Nigerian. If you don't have money, you're not going anywhere. You're just going to be stranded. You're going to be home for like four or five years until you get the money to go to college. So um, this is it. This is the, this is the major um, solution: is if you motivate yourself, if you encourage, if you encourage yourself, you can always push yourself to to your set goal. Okay, you have a goal set aside. Like, okay, this is what I want to achieve. I want to be a nurse. I want to be, a, uh, I want to have a master's in nursing and stuff like that. This is you. And if for you to have something like that, you have to look into your school, go into if research, go like, okay, what scholarship do they have? Okay, I don't have money, true, but what scholarship do they have? What, how can financial aid help me? And um, you said something about uh, undocumented student they also have this opportunity. In my country, no, you don't have all this opportunity. So undocumented students definitely have this op opportunity. So why can we not um, encourage ourselves to find a solution, I mean, find a way to get all this and use it on our own good? So that is, the, that is, that is what I do. So when it comes to um, cost of education, well, there is a way we can always pay, if not everything, but at least some part of it and work and try to pay every part of it and you will be, your cost of, uh, your loan or whatever you have will be minimized. So you will have much to pay. Yeah, so I feel like motiva motiv motivation is the major key here. So, Julie, do you have a comment there? Oh, yeah, I feel like what he's saying about motivation, like there's the saying, it's like where there's a will, there's a way. Um, and I feel like the thing about meeting you halfway, it's kind of like, okay, so I have to, I know that I have to like schedule my classes, get all this stuff done, so I'm gonna go to where I have to go to get that done, 
but then it's like, okay, but I have to take off work to do that because my work is unpredictable. I have to take that day off in order to go and get it done, but then that's less money for me to pay all my other stuff on top of tuition. And it's just like this like circle that's like, okay, like yes, I wanna be involved in school. I wanna do activities, I wanna do clubs, but at the same time, it's like, I can't afford to do all that stuff on top of having to pay bills, on top of having to do all this other stuff to have my life run normally, and but then still have like a rounded education and still be part of the school and still be part of this, but then also be have time to hang out with my family, have dinner with them. Like half the time I'm not there for dinner because I'm working or because I'm at school or because of some other reason. And it's like trying to be rounded in all aspects, it's like so hard to meet everyone halfway because there's only two parts to a half. And you can't split yourself up in seven different ways and then still meet people halfway. <laughs> this is great. So that's a very good point. Very good point. But here's the deal. I'm just trying to help you achieve what's important to you. So you decide what it is you want to do. We're not telling you to do everything. We're just addressing the issues that you guys brought up. Tuition, and then it was motivation or paying for college. So we're here for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if it's important to you, it's important to us. That's all she's saying. She's, we're not trying to set the agenda for your life. Because we know that you guys got a lot going on. We went through college. We, we know all of that. You know what I mean? Some of us are still in. Some of us just got out. <laughs> we know all of that. We know responsibilities. We know about families. We know about going to school. We know about all of that, working full-time, jobs that are more than full-time. We got that. All we're saying is we are here for you. We're here for you. And you don't have to do this by yourself. And if you got a job that won't allow you the flexibility to do what you need to do, then come see me. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have options is all we're saying. And we are here to let you know that you have options. And you can make the best choice for yourself with these options. That's what she means by meeting us halfway. I don't even know what to say. So. <laughs> I mean, like, that was more me speaking, like, generally, like, as, like, a student in college, like I feel like this is not just my problems, but everyone's problems. Um, so I understand what you mean by like, you're there for us, you're here to help. But I feel like just as like the general college student voice, that's what I was saying. But like definitely like I wanna be able to do this and this and this, but then it's like, it's just there's a lot of things that you have to consider on top of everything else. And it's like, I love my job and I would never wanna like, I don't wanna quit or like leave or anything. But then it's just like, well, you could, you know, have a job with less hours and then still have time for all this other stuff. And it's like, but, but I like money, I like spending money, I like doing stuff. And I don't, I don't know, it's just like, as a student, like, it's like, yeah, I have to study, I have to do all this, I have to have enough time to do this. And then it's just like, but like that nail polish, I really wanna get it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's just like, I know it's stupid and it's like there's stuff that like, you don't, you don't need that, you don't need that, but it's like stuff that makes me like not stress out as much is that holographic nail polish that's sitting on the shelf over there. That makes me not lose my crap over having like six essays to write on top of having a half an hour conversation with my Spanish professor, totally in Spanish, about the preterite, which I don't really get yet. So, I mean, it's just like stuff that you have to consider on top of all that. And it's like, well, you don't need to be doing that. You don't have to do that. You don't need, but it's like stuff that makes me not freak out about the stuff I have to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you don't have to freak out is what we're saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All I want, I want to hold you accountable to your words. When you have a goal, you do not let any obstacle distract you. So whatever your goal is, then you do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're just here addressing the goals that you guys brought up about tuition and stuff like that. If it's not important to you, then it's not important to you. But there are other people in this room that it may be important too. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying you got to give up your holographic nail polish either. Mm -hmm. You know, in getting involved in school, this is a commuter college. Getting involved is up to you. But if you want to address some of the issues that are important to you, you're going to have to get involved because it's important to you, right? And as we talk about politicians and things like that, we're democracy. We vote those people in. 
You have, what I'm here to empower you. You have all the power in your hands. You do. All the power in your hands. You do. It's just a matter of decision. Right? Mm -hmm. So you figure out what's important to you and get in line with that. And if it's not important to you, it's okay. Right? Because it's not important to you. But it's important to somebody else. So we're here. If you need a job, you where am I at? Where am I at? S building, what what's my office call? Okay, but what's the office call? Job Resource Center. Fantastic. Fantastic. So just come see us. We have we have a Twitter account and all kinds of accounts. So we you can join us on Facebook, stuff like that. You can friend us, or not friend us, like us. Like us. You can like us on Facebook. We tried it. We're going to get, continue to get the message out. If any of you all are interested in being, we have something called a JRC ambassador, which means this is a way that you, this is a way that you can get involved. I'm putting it out there. You can get involved on a temporary basis um, to change some things for the rest of your students. You're going to go to class anyway, right? Right? You're interested in being a JRC ambassador, you come and see me. Because what a JRC ambassador does is do many presentations in their classes about the resources that are going on for Job Resource Center. If you're interested in it, come see me. All right? All right. Do we want to add a few more voices to the conversation before we're out of time? We could take it in a different direction. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. I mean, I, this is just like a general question. Um, I, I kind of wanted to move away from the topic of just Moraine Valley and kind of go into more of a, a political aspect. Because I asked this, um, the question in my group, and I kind of wanted to get an actual answer. Because I know that there's conflicting answer, like conflicting sides to it um, that if we do talk to our politicians and stuff like that, just in like general, to rate, to lower the tuition rate for all colleges, because if I wanted to transfer to a place like DePaul, that is a crazy tuition rate. Crazy that even if I did try to do as many scholarships as I possibly could that's offered here and at DePaul, I probably would still have to take out mil like crazy amount of loans. and I. I kind of want to avoid the whole loan thing, but it's just, what can politicians do? Like, is it right to say that if they use our tax dollars to lower the tuition rates um, for uh, like college in general, like would that just be something that is a good thing just because, I don't know, because I know that And stuff like that. I don't know. It's just, I'm conflicted about it. That tax, that oh, raising a tax for tuition rates is a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> I'm conflicted know. about it too. I know. But you know, I guess I'm just looking at you. I don't know. I'm just looking at. I but you, okay, so here's the deal: is that um, there are many ways to do certain things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is about raising taxes. Sometimes not. Um, when you when you talked about DePaul, the, the, the thing about DePaul is that it's not a state school, right. so they don't receive tax dollars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, re, you know, it's all you know. People are paying, you know, donations, you know, alumni, you know, things like that. It doesn't mean that you can't go to DePaul, honey. We just can we can figure out a plan. Right. Do you understand what I mean? We can figure out a plan. Mm -hmm. And if any of you want to follow what. New York is doing. I haven't read the article in its entirety, but um, they're offering tuition free um, to two-year and four-year colleges. You're nodding your head. You probably saw that and read that. You talked about it in class. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, dig in some research and see how they were able to pull that off in terms of what's our relationship to politicians and what, the, what can they do for us um, and see if we can, you know, how can Illinois follow that lead? Rub again. 
we're up against the clock here. Thank you so much for uh, this wonderful dialogue that we've had from everybody and for the wonderful presentations and for your courage to come up here and share your ideas. So thank you.